Hi, I'm Jeffrey Gopin, Chief Operating Officer of Jewish Home Life Communities. We are a company made up of several business lines, which include two independent living, two assisted living communities, one skilled nursing home. We have our home care agency. We also have our hospice and our Jewish Home Life Medical Services. I want to start by talking about COVID-19 and how it's impacted our industry. Um, we continue to hear about COVID-19 in the media, and we continue to hear a lot about COVID-19, how it's impacted elder care communities, particularly nursing homes and assisted living communities. I really, really want to, to discuss with you how we, Jewish Home Life Communities, has attacked the issue of COVID-19. Um, we have a lot of folks that are interested in the services that we provide, but are nervous in bringing their loved ones to our communities at this time. I think that overall, um, in addressing what we've done as a company collectively, but also discussing how we as a community of businesses can really help um, protect your loved one by allowing them into our communities and demonstrating to you how we truly have taken care of our residents and our staff will help you make an informed decision and potentially not put off the inevitable in caring for a loved one in a time of crisis. We do this every day and we are able to provide a level of comfort and service to our residents and to our patients um, during this time of COVID. So one of the things we keep hearing, particularly as people come in and call our, our sales team, our emissions teams, is about positive cases in your communities and, and the impact that that has psychologically on someone determining whether it's time for them to admit a loved one to one of our communities. I really, really want to have a dialogue with you about what we have done at Jewish Home Life, which is going back to the beginning in which COVID just started impacting this country. And this company took broad sweeping steps to make sure that we were going to protect our residents and our staff. That is demonstrated in the fact that even back in March when personal protective equipment, i.e. PPE, was critical in critical shortages around the nation and throughout the world, um, but it was critical to protect our staff most places couldn't get it, couldn't afford it, couldn't find uh, the resources to bring it on board. That PPE was distributed throughout the company, continues to be distributed throughout the company, because the one thing we absolutely know for certain is that the use of PPE every day by our staff, particularly N95 masks, gloves and hand washing protects all around someone that potentially has COVID. So people ask the question about safety, particularly when considering the option of moving into um, an elder care community, one of our assisted livings, one of our independent livings, one of our nursing homes. Um, the bottom line is it is safe. So the decision-making process um, is one in which we enacted this incident command center, i.e. our ICC that met five days a week. They were on call on the weekend and currently we meet three days a week and we're on call seven days a week. We discuss everything. We discuss everything from cases to protective equipment supply needs to communication with our own staff to families. Um, any questions, concerns that come up or arise from anybody on that team or are brought forward from anybody on that team, we discuss. And we take the information that comes from the CDC, from the Department of Community Health, 
from the centers of Medicare and Medicaid services. We look at all this information. We follow best practices. We follow executive orders. We follow them all to a T. We do all the reporting that's mandated the day it has to be reported. There is full transparency to our staff and to the community because everything related to COVID is built on trust. But what we've also been able to demonstrate without question and without doubt in our minds of the Incident Command Center and those on it is that using PPE has demonstrated that we are not passing this virus on to either staff that work amongst that person that has come in contact and has come down with that virus and we're also not seeing it being passed on to our residents. As a matter of fact, we have seen zero cases since the initial cases back in March, which was the first time we dealt with COVID. We have seen no evidence in any of our buildings that you will pass on this virus when using the appropriate protective gear. So people want to ask, what happens when someone does come down with COVID? What happens if a resident has COVID? Um, there are cases with, uh, in which a, someone has gone out to a doctor's appointment that's critical and comes back into the facility and potentially now has been exposed while out in the community and comes back and we see signs or symptoms or something that tells one of our nurses we might have a problem. And so, the, again, the bar is very low. We have a potential problem, we do a test. We run that test, that test is highly sensitive, highly accurate, and we rely on that to tell us if someone is positive or negative. If someone does go out into the community and there's even a question, we can go as far as put them under a, a quarantine for several days, if not several weeks, just to monitor, because there is no 100% accurate, though this test that we do is 99% accurate, if that person is found to be positive, we make sure that we test everybody that could have come in contact. Um, we up our cleaning schedules, which we haven't even talked about, but our cleaning has been up in general. Um, we use an outside company and now have even purchased our own machines to do electrostatic spraying of antivirus uh, spray. We have antiviral sprays that any staff member can get their hands on. Um, we have hot spot um, cleaning that happens if someone potentially has the virus. So we will go into their room and do a deep clean. We'll make sure that everything around the room or any area that they may have touched, such as elevators, have been cleaned. So we really focus on the cleaning the protection, the testing, and that contact tracing, which is the circle around that individual that may have the virus. So at Jewish Home Life, we've been very fortunate, not only with the protective equipment that we have, but we also are very fortunate to have a lab that we developed a very close working relationship with that does PCR-based, which is a DNA-based test. It is highly sensitive, and that matters, as well as highly accurate. Sensitivity has to do with kind of how many days or even hours between you coming in contact with someone that might have COVID and you showing enough virus in your system for the test to, to demonstrate that you actually are now a carrier of the virus. So this lab and this collaboration between the lab has been excellent. Um, this lab has been able to do every test we've asked for. Um, we have tested hundreds and hundreds of times. We've established baselines testing everybody within our assisted living communities. We are establishing baselines within the nursing home. Um, anybody that needs a test, um, it, it only uh, behooves us to test them because we have to protect the loved ones that we are in charge of caring for every day. So we test um, and have a low threshold to establish why we should test somebody. That testing does um, give us an understanding of 
who might have been exposed and who we need to work with to make sure they're not at work and or if they're resident, quarantine them. Um, but the testing is only as good as the snapshot of that moment in time. So we do continue to test regularly. We do not test everybody, we test in samples. And when we find a positive, we do some contact tracing. We expand that circle. We have shown, once again, that the testing in conjunction with the use of PPE has truly given us a snapshot into our ability to control the expansion or the contraction of this virus going from one person to another. And we've not seen the, um, the passing on of this virus in any way because of the type of protection that we have in place and the types of testing that we're doing and how often we're doing it. If I can leave you with anything, um, I, I've had to sit in front of my team, my staff, um, even going back to March when we had our first cases, I donned my protective equipment and I went onto units where COVID was active before I knew much uh, about COVID, its transmittability, um, and, and how it would impact myself. But this company um, really took COVID very seriously as far as making sure that if my line staff had to be up on a unit that had someone with COVID, that if I was going to speak to their safety and the use of equipment and testing, that I and other leadership would also put ourselves in similar situations because we trusted in the process that we were putting forth knock on wood, lucky to say that none of us have come down with COVID, that I now really have a deep understanding, having gone through this for months, of the fact that we can significantly impact to almost a point where I would say 99.5 to 99.9% .9 impact on transmission by doing what we've already done because we have seen this for months, which is using the right gear, washing of our hands, making sure that everybody is following protocol. We have nurses walking around doing this, making sure people are following the protocols. We have our infection control team. We have those 18 members of the ICC that are in different communities, different business lines, making sure that people are following processes and protocols to keep people safe. And we continue to see that COVID can be beaten by using common sense, by using what we know, by using protective gear, by using good sanitation practices, cleaning and hand washing. Um, and that testing is another level in which we can make sure that if there is a case, that that case remains a single individual case that can be treated and no one else is put at risk. And we see this over and over again. And I, I just want to ask families that are considering moving their loved ones in or need a place to, uh, to rehab after an acute admission to consider us even at this point in time because I know that your loved ones are safer here than they are many times within or up, well, I should say within the community or outside of the scope of our buildings. I thank you very much.